And Mr. Wrestling Observer himself, Dave Meltzer, joining us here today. The new issue is up on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com right now. If you're a subscriber or if you subscribe today at WrestlingObserver.com, you can read this whole issue. It's about 45,000 words. I could actually probably find out here, but there's a lot to talk about. And uh, gigantic uh, bio of Scott Hall, obviously, is the lead story. And we talked a little bit about the Waltman interview, talking about him falling at home. But uh, what else did you learn in putting this bio together? That's a tough one. I mean, um, I mean, I knew most of the background already. Um, so I can't say I learned a lot about that. I mean, I learned some things from his friends as far as, you know, the last 10, 15 years of his life, you know, when he was more out of wrestling than in it. Um, you know, just kind of his ups and downs and things like that. And I mean, I knew, I knew the stories of like him being like clean and everything, you know, that the public thought was, was not really the case, but I also didn't know just how bad it had gotten in the last couple of years. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and that was kind of sad. And obviously the, the, the situation as far as his death is, is really horrible in a lot of ways. Um, and also the fact that, that his friend saw it and knew it, knew it was coming, which I also didn't realize. Dave, I don't want to take this too much away from Scott Hall, but the really very sad notation uh, that Sean Waltman told you about him being on the floor for several days and, and having so many issues because he was so cut off from the world because of COVID. Have you heard of, of, of many stories like that from older wrestlers and from wrestlers who have been suffering from adult from drugs and alcohol in the past? I mean, it's kind of a forgotten thing maybe in wrestling that, that this has affected people so much because they have been so cut off from family and friends and places that they, they usually needed to go for support. You know, I haven't heard stories like that. I mean, the, the stuff that I've heard is more, um, you know, wrestlers who've gotten it um or or you know people who've gotten it and you know there's been a a lot of wrestler and and people in wrestling who have, have passed away due to COVID. um you know not a lot you know more in mexico than anywhere else but you know i mean a lot in the united states you know like butch reed and jim crockett and and jim crockett jr and so many others where you um you know people kind of uh sometimes dismiss it but when you know i'm writing about it and it's people that you kind of know it's it's hard to dismiss you know one of the other big stories in the issue is about the double or nothing show which is still uh months away may 29th t-mobile arena and there are only 585 tickets left at this point months out it's at a 1.145 million dollar gate it is the Largest non WWE gate in the history of professional wrestling, beating the New Japan in, Ring of in, Honor in, show in North America. There's a lot North of America, Japan, yes, obviously Japan shows, but yeah, as far as in North America, it, it it broke the record. Yeah. So you know, we used to uh, go when UFC was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I should say it was hotter back then because you know, revenue. It's really, wise, it's really probably at its hottest right now. Yeah, but I mean, I you know, to me, the glory days of of UFC was when we were going to all those shows, and going to Vegas for these shows was so much fun. And we used to do the convention over Memorial Day weekend, and you know, I just personally, I I love the idea of a big show in Vegas over Memorial Day weekend. They were always so much fun to go to. We had the convention and everything. And uh, I wonder if that uh, kind of plays into the uh, the ticket sales and everything here. Just like a fun date to travel. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, they, they feel that this pandemic is over. They want to go out on Memorial Day. It's in Vegas. Uh, what do you attribute these numbers to? I mean, there's cer it's certainly part of it. Um, I just think that they don't come to the West Coast enough. And because of that, there's kind of like a, a, a you know, a, a pent-up demand. And secondarily... Uh, AEW only does four pay-per-views a year, and um, I think that like Chicago and Vegas, which are the traditional Labor Day and uh, Memorial Day shows, I think that they're always going to do well. I mean, as long as as long as AEW is a fairly hot company, um, I think Chicago will always sell out because it's a great market for them when it comes to a big show. And I think the same for Vegas in the sense of I'm not saying it'll always sell out. The T-Mobile is a big building um, for them to run, and it was very impressive. I mean, the, the key to me with with, the, with with this gate is that 
two years ago, they were going to run um, at the MGM Grand, which is you know pretty much across the street um, from T-Mobile for the you know the Memorial Day show, and and they had like eight nine thousand tickets sold, which was good. But it's just like they're so much stronger. Um, they they got out so much faster for this one, and it really shows like that's that's where people go like oh they're not growing, and it's like I look at these numbers and it's like. They're growing in the key places that you would see growth, you know, I mean, there's no, you know, and growing substantially, too. You've also got a little blurb here in the uh, AEW section. In a story that may end up significant down the line to AEW or may mean nothing, the shareholders of Discovery Incorporated voted in favor of the merger with Warner Media. Discovery will be in control of the new company having purchased stock from AT&T. Uh, what are what are uh, what are you thinking here? It's too early to think. You don't know. You know what I mean? It's like if if um, you just don't know who's going to like wrestling and who's going to not like wrestling and things like that. I think as long as the show is performing well, I think they're fine. But if it's not performing well, you know, these type of these are going to be the new people who are making the decisions. So, uh, you know, it, it you know, I mean, like changes at at, um, you know, changes in 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 uh, time, you know, uh, uh, TBS and everything like that were part of the reason that that WCW died. I mean, not as much as people make it out, not even close, but it is a fact. It was a factor. Sure. You had a guy who didn't like wrestling, but he also didn't like a wrestling company that was losing between 60 and 80 million dollars. So, I mean, well, there are two different stories there. But, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like if W, you know, like. If WCW um, was losing a million or two million dollars a year, I think that they would not have been canceled. I think people would just go, ah, you know, we're getting good. You know, we're, or it's, certainly it's pro- if they were if they were grossing one hundred twenty five million dollars, doesn't matter I mean, how much if, that guy hates wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah, no. If they were making a profit, if they were making a profit, they, they, that it wouldn't. Have, yeah, it, it wouldn't. It would have. It would have never been canceled. But what happened was, they lost an incredible amount of money, so they wanted to sell it. There was a willing buyer, and then you had someone who was just like, you know, I don't really want to, you know, wrestling on my station. And I mean, the thing is, is that the wrestling ratings were underperforming at that time. If the wrestling ratings were what they were before. You know, very few guys cancel your number one rated show or your number two rated show. When it's a show that's doing a little bit below your station average, you're always in trouble. So, yeah, you know, I mean, like that's, you know, where where people go, it was all Jamie Kilner. And it's like, well, he made the decision, but the decision was made because he could make that decision because the company wasn't doing well. Dave, did the didn't Discovery dip their toe into the water with wrestling for a moment with TNA and with Ring of Honor, or am I hallucinating that that moment in time? Did they not try to do that at, at one point? Um, what what was the station Destination X? Were they owned by Discovery? Des- Destination I mean, um, America, yes. Destination America, yeah, 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 yeah. So they did, and then they they canceled, yeah. Yeah. Was there any internal just like a feel of like, OK, this isn't for us because it's like you look at some of those like Destination America. It's like it's a channel that's like, it's got barbecue cooking contests. Like there's ways to probably spice up a lot of what they actually do. I mean, it's just it, was there any internal feeling at all about wrestling or about like that genre in, in general there? Or was it like, OK, it was on and it was all so fast. Nobody even noticed. Um, I, as I recall, um, I mean, there were a couple of things that happened, but ultimately the ratings weren't that good. And I mean, that's what, that's what ended up, you know, being, you know, I mean, there were, there's always other factors, but the overriding factor was the ratings weren't that good. So, I mean, it's like if they could come and get a stay, like in at the, you know, you never know what's going to happen in, in negotiations because you don't know how much when these next negotiations come around, how much AEW is going to ask, how many other people are going to be interested. Um, but, you know, who's in charge is, is is part of it. Like, if they don't like wrestling, they would be, um, you know, less willing to spend, a hundred, let's say, $125 million a year on wrestling. Um, you know, so all of these these things are all factors come, you know, 2023 20, when they got to negotiate this new television deal. All right, we only have a moment here. I don't think you probably wrote anything about this in The Observer because it just happened today, but Tony Khan was on Busted Open, and he said he will be relaunching Ring of Honor's weekly TV show following Supercard of Honor. So it's continuing on as a separate promotion. Yeah, maybe streaming, maybe television, which says that he probably doesn't have a finalized television deal right now is the way I heard that. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, and he also said he's going to book it. And, and um, you know, I worry about, you know, trying to book three television shows. Uh, well, I hope that means that he books the overarching storylines and then hires some other dude to do all the work. Yeah, I suppose. But I just think that his focus should be AEW. It's hard enough to book AEW with the three hours of television every week. But, you know, we'll see exactly how it, you know, works out. I mean, there's ways there's ways you can make it work. Um, I just hate to see him, you know, I, I know how hard he works, and I hate to see him adding more to his plate right now. All right, the new Observer is up on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, everybody. If you sign up today, you can read the entire issue and every issue that we have available. There's over 1,000 issues of the Observer, and there's over uh, 13,000 audio shows in the archive. So there's a lot of great stuff up there. And uh, P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009, if you'd like to grab hard copies. And uh, what's the cost, Dave? Uh, that's thirteen fifty. Uh, thirteen fifty would be the cost for uh, a, 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 a month of the Observer. So you can go from there. One hundred and fifteen for uh, ten months. All right, we're out of time, everybody. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. I'm your host Brian Alvarez, joined, of course, by Big Vinny V. Hi, Brian. Craig. Hello. Lance Storm. Is that a towel? Craig, uh, legit looks like Julius Caesar. Yeah, I did my, my hair down. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Seems like we got a lion loose in, in uh, Lance's house, coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> Is Lance, that a Lance, puma? Lance brought the yeah. jungle beast. I was hoping Bridge would come along to either feed me these grapes or wave me with one of those big fans, but when I suggested this, she was surprisingly negative. What? She, Why? She didn't like that idea one bit. Why? Oh, my God, Vinny, please. Mm. Make sure you take that outfit to Hawaii and get video of you running down the beach in it. Oh, bro, oh. this thing's going everywhere with me. It's awesome. All right, here we go. I couldn't take a big one. Uh. Mm. Excuse me? Look who's here. Vinny, hand her them grapes. I have the greatest wife. She's going to give me a couple of grapes, not too many. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> Like all Romans. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a grape before? It's not alive. I've never been fed a grape. Thank you, love. I appreciate it. I'll take one more. No, I won't. Oh, God, she's through it. Hey! One more. Suck it off! Hey, we're not having a food fight in here. God damn it. Grapes all over the floor. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.